so it is a beautiful morning this morning. I am in Malala, Oregon, uh, southeast of Portland, getting ready to go meet with uh, farmer Mike Ellis of Mount Hope Farms. Really excited. Uh, this is an area that's fairly new to me. Don't know a lot about uh, what's going on up in the Oregon area. I'm excited to learn about how water works, um, what types of crops they're growing, what types of equipment they're using. Uh, gonna be a fun day. Uh, looking forward to learning a lot more. So I'm here with Farmer Mike Ellis. Uh, we're overlooking this beautiful backdrop um, in southeast of Portland in Malala, Oregon. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let Mike introduce himself and tell us a little bit about what's going on out here. Well, I'm Mike Ellis. Uh, my family's been out here farming for, oh, since my great-great-grandpa came out on the Oregon Trail at the age of uh, eight years old. We've bounced around throughout the Willamette Valley and uh, have been out on this farm since my grandpa bought it in 62. Anyways, now it's uh, me and my dad farming. We're trying to farm more biologically out here, so we're paying uh, real close attention to our soil microbes and soil health, trying to build organic matter up so that we can make the most of the water that we have on the farm. We don't have a lot of irrigation, so a lot of the times we're relying on just what falls as rainfall throughout the year. And uh, in Oregon, we get a pretty good stretch of dry weather through the summer when we need those crops to fill so we're trying to make the most efficient use of every bit of water we can out here. Awesome well I'm looking forward to learning more about that organic matter um, and what that kind of means to water and hopefully learning a little bit more about what water you do have. Thanks Mike. So Mike, earlier we were chatting a little bit about soil, microbes, and organic matter. Um, why don't we take a look at some of the soil you have and you can chat a little bit, chat with us a little bit about what you have going on. Yeah, see if I can get a sample pulled here. We've been uh, keeping um, all of our grass clippings blown back in here around the grapes. That gives us another layer of protection, keeps it from drying out as bad, and keeps that soil covered. And then pull a core here. Our soils are a bit of a heavy uh, silt loam. We've got a real heavy clay subsoil. This probe isn't going to get down to it, but if you go down about three or four feet, you'll start seeing some blue clay. And down there at that depth, the roots aren't going to get down through too much. They may get into it a little bit. That blue clay was actually used to make uh, brick and uh, tile for drainage tile out here not on this farm but uh on others around they uh, dig that clay for that so you mentioned earlier that you guys haven't done any cultivating of your soil here and kind of organic matter is really important to you and when we flip around and look behind us we have uh, what, what are we looking at here uh, this is our red clover and uh here again, it's another rotational crop that we use. We harvest it for seed. We'll get two years on a stand typically. And uh, it uh, fixes nitrogen and builds the nitrogen level up in the soil. All of this uh, leafy material here, early in the spring, we come in and we will flail this down because you have to clip the clover to get it to really set seed, to get it to switch over to seed production rather than vegetation. A lot of guys will bale that off or uh, make insulage haylage out of it. We choose to grind it up and put it back onto the soil. That creates a nice mat down there, which means that uh, during the summer when things heat up, it helps insulate that soil, it helps hold the moisture in, and it uh, helps us build our soil organic matter. For every about 1% soil organic matter increase, we can hold another almost three quarters of an inch of rain per acre out here. So it helps us make better use of the rainfall that we get because uh, in Oregon, we'll get rain 
all through the fall, winter, and into the spring. But during the summer, we don't see hardly a drop. So we're counting on these fields that we don't have irrigation on for that uh, rainfall that we've gotten throughout the year to hold up in the soil and give them enough moisture to fill seed and make a crop for us. Wow, so the more organic matter we can get built into our soils, the more water we can store. Super cool, thank you for sharing. So we're back here at the shop and uh, one of the things as I go on this ag tech trek I've been finding is that growers are extremely innovative and um, are great at coming up with solutions to their own problems a lot. So Mike, why don't you tell me a little bit about what we're looking at right now? Well, this is our sprayer here. My dad, Bill, built this in the shop. I helped him some and uh, our old one was worn out so we had to... Uh, rebuild. You can tell more about it than I can because you're the one that designed all of this. Uh. Well, we had several things we wanted to do differently uh, while the old one was worn out. Uh, this tractor sprays on a lot of pretty wet ground and we usually have a pair of float tires that are, oh, they're four feet wide. Uh, and uh, anyhow, why we need to keep things as light as possible. And we didn't want to build a heavy set of booms and uh, to hire somebody to do it was out of our uh, realm of possibilities at the time. So we wanted to get something that uh, I could uh, fold from the tractor. My back said I didn't want to lift this to put it up there for transport. And uh, so we built this with some hydraulic folds. In today's world it's not very wide, it's just 50 feet, but uh, I can keep track of it a little better than a wide one. And it keeps the weight down. Uh, this unit sprays about 10 acres on a tank full and uh, for our size of fields uh, works out pretty good. It has a breakaway tip so when I forget and uh, get too close to a telephone pole, why it doesn't tear everything up. Uh, find usually anytime we start out with something new, it usually takes a season or two to get the bugs worked out. Even when you build it yourself, why um, it, it still has some things that uh, need to be addressed. So uh, uh, we. I don't care whether it's a brand new piece of equipment or what, uh, it needs to fit what you're doing and it usually takes a little time. Um, well, that was a fantastic explanation and this is a super cool piece of equipment that you built yourself. Um, the, the innovativeness and ingenuity that goes into being a grower in the, the Western US never ceases to amaze me. Thanks for sharing. So Mike, we're looking at your table grape uh, vineyard here, and I've looked at a lot of different irrigation systems um, and really interested in learning about kind of what you're doing for irrigation. So why don't you explain what you have going on here? Well, uh, this is a bit of a homemade system here. It's all small scale because our first block was half, uh, half an acre. We did it as a test block. We found a market for the grapes, and so we've expanded. We're up to just under two acres. And we've got a small little Irritrol controller, runs off a 9-volt battery. Um, it's controlling two different valves down here. One going over to the old block and one going down to the new. And we've got about two emitters per plant. They're each uh, dumping about a half gallon of water a minute. So and how do you use this? So can you like schedule this to run so long or so many days? Is it kind of like your lawn sprinkler system? Yep, yep. Uh, it's got a menu in here where I can set how long I want to run. Right now it's for an hour. And then I can set the days 
of the week to run on. Right now I have it running on every day of the week because we've been in a bit of a dry stretch. And it lets you set what time it comes on. I've been running it at two in the morning so that it's at night. We don't have evaporation, all that water can soak in. And you can set multiple start times and stop times on it. So uh, you have an electrical supply out here. Is that how uh, this is working or is how's it powered? Right now, all of this is off of battery. This has just got a little, uh, little nine volt battery on it. Uh, we've looked at putting a wire in though to put an electrical supply in so we don't have to worry about checking batteries and making sure everything is staying charged up. Wow, really cool system. Um, my sprinkler system at home, if you go back and look at some of my previous Ag Trek, Ag Tech Trek videos, how I run my sprinklers at home is very similar. But as you can see here, we're using the same type of technology to irrigate table grapes. Awesome, thanks for that explanation, Mike. So Mike, uh, at home I have a, a small little vineyard of table grapes and I learned something recently from you uh, via your Instagram and it was deleafing. Why don't you talk a little bit about your setup here and um, why when I look around I see leaves on the ground. Okay, we're using a V-style trellis. It's kind of buried in here under the canopy but it splits that canopy and lets you get stuff going to either side. That allows us to take fruit, uh, fruiting canes, and run them each direction down the wire from the main stem on each side. So we can get these nice clusters forming on each side. The leafing gives us a chance to increase our airflow through here and around the clusters so that it cuts down on fungal issues. And it gives us an opportunity as we're coming through here and doing this to straighten out any clusters that may be tangled up. If they're too crowded, we will come in and remove a few so that they have room to fill out. But typically with our table grapes and with how we're feeding them, we don't feel that we have to drop a lot of fruit on the ground. We just try and open it up, get it a uh, good airflow through here so that we don't have fungal issues, and then let that canopy go up and keep on harvesting sunlight up there above. Awesome. I learned so much just from that little explanation. Thanks so much. So I'm finishing up uh, my visit here with Mike and uh, really enjoyed learning about kind of some of the custom equipment they built a little bit about their soil and what they're trying to do to build organic matter. Really fun visit. Uh, Mike, I understand that uh, you are pretty active on Instagram. It's actually how I found you. Um, how could people get a hold of you and uh, reach out to you if they wanted to? Well, best way is on Instagram. I'm uh, Farmer Mike Ellis on Instagram. If you search for that, you should find me. If you want to see more of the product, mine's the more day-to-day -day side of the farm. It gives you the what we're doing out here, our equipment running, that kind of stuff. If you want to see more of our product and what we have to offer, my wife runs the Mount Hope Farms Instagram account on both uh, Instagram and on Facebook. And so those ways are uh, great ways of reaching out and getting a hold of me and seeing what we're doing out here. Awesome. If you aren't following uh, him on Instagram, I highly recommend it. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot being out here today. Thanks again, Mike, and uh, maybe we'll come visit again sometime.